Hi there, because I've been helping a lot of viewers fix their issues that they have with their game while they're following our tutorial series, I thought I'll just go through how I fix these issues because a wise man once said if you teach a man how to fish, it's better than giving a man a fish every day. So I'm hoping that me going through the debugging process with all of you guys will help you to get better at making your own games as well because another thing as well is as a programmer, right? When you grow, it's really when you are fixing bugs, when you are following a tutorial or, or when you're writing code, you don't really become better as a programmer. I'm going to be featuring viewer bugs whenever I run into them. I, I don't want to just be solving these issues silently and then not getting any... I mean, firstly, if no one sees it, it doesn't really help anyone. If I give you the answers, I don't think it really helps anyone here. So let me just jump into the issue that the viewer has and uh, we will see what I have done to fix it. Again, the, the fix isn't as important as the process because whatever I show you here, right, you will apply the same process when you are fixing your own bugs as well. So this is the issue that the viewer has. I'm just gonna show you the issue right here. So the good thing about the user is he, he has actually recorded his issue here. So as you can see, his character is flipping but it doesn't move. And well, he's followed up to part 6 of the Metroidvania tutorial series. So whenever you have a problem like that, right, if you are a beginner programmer and whenever you debug, you don't know where to start, you want to look at the parts of your code, right, that are responsible for the issue. So when the character is not moving, the first thing I try to look for because these are the two scripts. Okay, so in Metroidvania and the tutorial series that we have, right, all enemies extend the enemy script. So the enemy script itself, right, doesn't actually handle the movement. Okay, you will not see anything to do with changing velocity or to do with changing position. So Control F is a great way to find where the error lies. So because the changing of velocity and position isn't found on the enemy, right? You want to go to the actual script itself then. There are two scripts that could be responsible. So here, if I search for position, you can find some stuff but the position here isn't really used for movement. It's just a recast check. And then the other thing here is velocity. Velocity is how we cause the enemies to move. And if you search for velocity, the change in velocity is here. So this is what causes the enemy to move. And uh, if you look at the code logic here, it actually makes sense because when the enemy is facing to the right, then you move towards the right. Otherwise, you move towards the left. Right. So this movement code has to run for the enemy to move. And the problem is that the enemy it isn't moving at all. So likely what's happening here is that the this chunk of code is just not activating. Okay. So the first thing that I looked into, right, was because for this code to activate, right, you will need to make sure that the state here, right, is in idle. It's not in flip. So the first thing I checked was to play the game and I wanted to see what state the enemy was in. Alright, so the problem is right here. I'm just gonna go to debug mode here and you should be able to see that the enemy forever stays in the flip state. So if you go frame by frame, you might be able to see the enemy go into, okay, it doesn't go into the idle state at all. So you will see the enemy get stuck here. If the enemy gets stuck here, right, then we have to see what exactly is causing the enemy to get stuck there because whenever the enemy flips, right, it is supposed to actually change states back to idle, all right? So when the enemy stays in flip, you want to look at the entire chunk of, chunk of code here and see what's going on here. Okay, I, I wasn't the one who created this tutorial series. So when I was debugging, I was just uh, looking through the code. I, I know the code actually a lot less than some of you who are viewing this video. Okay, so why I can debug this is because you've got to be able to zoom in to the areas of the code that have the problems and then you have to find what exactly it is that is causing the bug to happen. So right here, right, the strange thing is that the enemy state is changed to idle but it's not firing. Okay, so there are two possibilities because to say that it's not firing is not true. Okay, so because code is never wrong, okay, a lot of uh, students that I teach, right, whenever they run into a bug and something doesn't execute, they just stop there and then they think, oh, Unity must be bugged. But that's rarely if ever the case. Most of the time, 99% of the time, it's a problem with your code. So you've got to figure out why is this not firing. Okay, one thing you can do is to check. You can uh, print a couple of messages here, flip the tape, and then you can print the uh, flip the pen, success. So if you want to see, because whenever a piece of code doesn't run, right, the most probable probable area is here. Whenever you have an if and else statement, that can block code from running. Okay, I'm just gonna skip ahead and tell you that the problem is not here. Okay, you you would have to test this out to know yourself, but the problem isn't here. And the other thing that you want to see as well is if you know that the code here runs, right, but you're not sure if the code here runs, you can print two statements here as well and see whether the code ever gets here. So you can do something like one and two, and you can see if both commands run. If the command here doesn't run, then likely the code never runs all the way. Okay, but whenever you see a block of code, it's very unlikely that, that the code never runs all the way unless you get a null reference exception. Okay, I'll elaborate on this in a different video, but for now, let's just take it that the code runs. Hey, okay, you're just gonna have to have to take it from my experience here. And I mean, because I've tested all of this stuff before already. So this runs, which means that this actually changes the state back to idle right here. In idle itself, right, there is actually a code that changes the 
state back to flip, right? So what's happening here is that it's very possible that the state change to idle, fires, and then immediately this code fires and then changes the state back to flip. So the problem is likely with the raycast right here. And that, that was why if you look at the forum post that I went through with the viewer, right? I asked him to add this and then I asked him to tell me how often the code fires. And if I run a code for you now, you will see that it's firing constantly. So what is actually happening is that the flipping actually works. Well, it just always immediately flips. You go to the console right here. The console is debugger's best friend. You've got to be able to know how to use it and uh, you've got to use it mainly to print messages to tell you where the code is going. So you will see here that the enemy is constantly detecting a ledge even when the ledge is not there. So that means that there might be a problem with the code here. But this this code is copied from the tutorial series. So I wouldn't say it's the best written code. I would, I would have written it in a different way. But it's, test, it's been tested by thousands of viewers and there is no problem with the code. So if there's no problem with the code here, right? Issue would be with one of the variable settings. Whenever I get a platform issue with Unity, the first thing I check is to see because this cadaver, right? is actually coded to detect the ground. And then you will see that in the Raycast script here, it actually check for only certain layers. And the most common mistake that beginner coders do is that they forget to label their their platforms as ground or they label their character as ground so the next thing i did was check whether everything was assigned to the right layer and it actually is which actually makes this problem uh, more confusing for me so because of that the next thing i did right was to check whether there was anything wrong with the ray card because if there is not no problem here right, again whenever something goes wrong right you cannot say that there is a problem the function this is what a lot of beginner coders like to think okay so right now you have to think very systematically so if this is not what's wrong then the problem might be here to ultimately fix the issue right it's I actually wrote a function here called Android is more selected. This is wonderful for programming. It just takes a little bit of time to write the actual code. And what I did was I used the about draw line right here, these two lines right here. And I just basically drew the lines that the raycast was using. And then because the raycast used the latch style and wall check direction, I just basically copy these two and instead of using raycast i use debug draw line takes a little bit of math to figure out and i also colored the lines white so that it's easy for me to see now you can leave this on draw gizmo selected there I, I usually when i code stuff i like to actually add on draw gizmo selected ui to to my objects because it helps me to see what is going on in my various configurations it's really difficult to eyeball the numbers and then make sure that the values are working so in this case here right the on draw gizmo selected it actually pinpointed the issue exactly to me All right so the cadaver is coded to flip whenever it touches the wall or when it when this line doesn't touch any ground and therein lies the problem once i did a on draw gizmo selected the problem is obvious it was that the let's check y is not long enough right so if i just lengthen the let's check y it would actually fix my issue right here now there are a couple of other problems with uh, the now you see the enemy is moving right so there are a couple of other problems now it's moving backwards uh this is really not that big of a problem uh this is just because the viewer when he created his assets right you always want your assets to face right you never want them to face left this is just how game design works well right is always the forward direction and you always want to get your sprites to face forwards if he flips his artwork using photoshop or whatever right this will fix the issue that's one thing the other thing as well is i would highly recommend that whether you are the viewer who has this problem or whether you are someone else whenever you are coding in unity always make sure to get your your Visual Studio link to the Unity API. This is so that you get the benefit of autocomplete. Otherwise, it gets very difficult for you to code. For, for example, because there wasn't a linkage to Unity, uh, the Unity uh, code base. When I tried to draw a line, it was really difficult for me because there wasn't there wasn't a prompt. So you will get a prompt like this, but then you will also get a prompt with uh, Unity function definition, which makes it a lot easier. So you can check out the other video that we have to see how to set up uh, Unity autocomplete. All right. So, but this is really important okay? because you never want to code without Unity autocomplete set up in your system. It just takes forever. But it just makes everything unreasonably difficult and that's all i have for this video i want to create more videos like that where i fix bugs because i think that's really where the value is a lot of people they, they get stuck programming uh, maybe uh, six months a year they don't feel like they grow the main reason is because you just don't fix enough bugs and you don't get exposure to see how other people fix bugs a lot of people when they run into a bug that they cannot fix they just give up and that is where you stagnate as a program so watch out for more videos and uh, thank you very much